Hey guys, welcome back to the MBTX Living Channel. My name is Chase Bradley. I'm Veronica Bradley. And I love new homes. And I love old homes. And we made several videos in the past talking about how great new construction is and praising the new construction builders. But today, we're gonna take a look at some of the reasons why you may not wanna get a new construction home, or at any rate, at least be very aware when you do make that purchase. People flock to new construction homes for the perceived idea that they're not gonna have to do maintenance, they're getting a great warranty, and of course, that new home smell. But could that new home smell really just be masking a bigger problem? The first thing we're gonna talk about because we've seen it in the past, number one, poor workmanship. So we're basically looking not just at the cosmetics because you know paint you're gonna you're gonna see splotches here or textures that are not you know quite up to par we mark that that's cosmetic that's minor but we're also gonna look at your windows cracks gaps uh, siding chipped cement fiber foundation issues the grading of the sod and the soil sometimes I feel like the builders don't like me but I'm just like sticking everything on the wall and they're like oh that's just minor I was like yeah it's minor but it still needs to be taken care of with any home purchase you need to get an inspector period highly 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 recommended and if you're purchasing a house out of state yes make sure you have a real estate agent a mom, a dad, somebody that you trust to help you do some of those inspections, be at those inspections, because there's definitely things that you do not want to miss. Okay, so remember, the builder's rep is the employee of that builder. So do they really have the best interest um, in, your, in your purchase of a home? Maybe, but their opinion is very biased. That's why we always say work with a realtor who knows new construction, Another thing to be aware of when going under contract with a new construction home are contract issues. Now, when you buy a new construction home, the paperwork that you sign, that's the builder's contract. That is not a Texas uh, promulgated contract. So the builder's contract is specific to that builder, which basically can be anything that builder wants it to be. So for instance, contingencies, if you have to sell a home, in order to buy a new home, the wording might be different. Another thing to look out for on the contract is gonna be the closing date. You're purchasing a new home. It may or may not even be close to being completed yet, and they're gonna issue you a closing date. That date, yeah, that date's a, a moving target a lot of the times. It's almost always going to change depending on financing depending on the repairs or other changes that need to be made to the home so don't go you know setting up a delivery date for your furniture on the day that they put on there because you still may be like weeks out from closing um, and keep in mind the builder will penalize you if you can't close when they are ready to close we always like to talk about taxed values right so you go through your financing, you're looking at a final disclosure and it, it'll tell you a price that's gonna be your monthly price, right? So a thing that you definitely need to ask them, is this the land value or the improved value? So what are those two things? The land value, say a land value, you know, taxes on land typically are a lot less than what you're gonna get on improved. So a land that has a house or structures or things like that built on it. So you have, you know, they're basing your monthly payment off of land value, which is nothing. Compared to what the home value is. And then a year later, you end up getting the improved value and you take a look at that and all of a sudden you're, you know, your $1,500 house payment, your $2,000 house payment, just jumps up like five, six, seven hundred dollars. That could be a shocker for a lot of people when they get that first bill of the next year after they start taxing your home on the improved value. Which will happen. There are some ways that you can help lower that tax debt. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be through filing exemptions. So if you're here in Texas, you know, you'll qualify for that homestead as long as it's your primary property. 
Uh, you may even qualify some, for some additional exemptions depending on your age, your veteran status, the size of land that you got, you know, different things like that. So make sure if your real estate agent isn't telling you about those things, ask about them. And at any rate, once you've already purchased the house, make sure you go onto your county's website and you look up what exemptions that you may possibly be eligible for. Uh, your pocketbook will thank you when you lower your tax debt and you're not having to pay so much extra. It grinds my gears when we go on to a listing appointment or we're helping someone who's bought a home before in the past and we realize they never filed a homestead exemption. As he mentioned, every Texas resident is entitled to that um, as long as it's your primary home. When you purchase a new construction home, look forward to paying earnest money, right? Or some type of earnest deposit. We've seen this range anywhere from on the low end, $500, all the way up to, and this really kind of depends on the builder mm -hmm. and the price point of the home that you're looking at. Uh, it could be up to $10,000. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't have $10,000 kind of lying around to put towards earnest money, that, that may be a little bit of a roadblock in terms of purchasing a new construction home but that was kind of a one-off that was a much higher price point home if you're not looking at that price point you're kind of looking at a lower price point you're typically ranging anywhere from you know a thousand to maybe two or three thousand uh, dollars but earnest money is definitely something to think about that money just doesn't disappear at the end of the day it goes towards closing so as long as you do close on the home it goes towards closing definitely beware of ways that you can lose yes. your earnest money though. And typically it kind of falls onto you not being able to close that's, on time. Yeah, that's basically, or close at all. Yeah, pretty much. They want you to close on the home. The only time they keep your money is if you don't close on the home. All right, and talking about lenders, she kind of alluded to it already, but most big box, even some smaller builders will have an in-house lender. And you see all these signs and these, you know, decorations and everything talking about the lowest rates and closing cost assistance. You see all these different advertisements for low rates, lower than the standard rate is what's going on right now. But most of the time you have to lose that, use the in-house lender for whoever the builder is. Uh, so that could be a good thing. It could also kind of be, you know, I won't say a bad thing, but it's just something to think about um, because you're, you're kind of giving more control over to them. And that's, that's really what they want. <laughs> that's exactly what they want. And in, in terms of having more control, they're able to give you more incentive to be able to do that. Make sure you're shopping the market. You're being super competitive, making sure that, you know, you don't just give your business away to somebody that just because you already have them mm -hmm. or because, you know, they, it just sounded good. Make sure you really do your research and you get something that's going to work well for you in addition to being you know, inexpensive. Yeah. And I just want to kind of highlight something because it's funny how we're talking about that. I just got a message, you know, I'm going to read, I'm not going to tell you what builder it is, but we showed some homes over the weekend to one of our out of town buyers, new construction homes. And he was asking, how is it going? I said, hey, they're, they picked their top three. They're going to talk this evening. I'll let you know. And he says, okay. And he says, so he's like, oh, they can get a 5.25 rate and we'll cover all closing costs. We'll just bump up the price of the home and they'll be good. So builders will say all the things, but they're going to bump up the price of the home so that you can, you can get those incentives. So I'm not saying that that's necessarily um, a bad thing. You just need to see the bigger picture and see where your finances fit best, right? Um, but just keep in mind, they're not going to always give you the stars in the moon. They're going to make you think that you need to see the bigger picture. And that's why we say talk to a private lender, talk to the, the builder's lender, interview a couple of agents, you know, like it's, you have to make the best decision for you. New construction can still be a great way to break into home ownership. Builders usually offer great interest rates that can be points lower than the going rate, which can save you tens of thousands of dollars over the course of the loan and closing incentives that can help you save thousands at closing. Not all that glitters is gold though. And it is important to do your research and stay involved throughout the process to make sure you're getting what you're paying for. So 
thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video and at any rate i hope you learned something if you're in the market right now to buy a new construction home we hope you could take some information away from this video so leave a comment with something that you think we missed or something that you would like to know more about if we don't see you down there in the comments we'll see you in the next video thank you and goodbye Bye.